sweating already. Great. Another good day. We uh, we went and tried the disc yesterday. You see that on the last video. It actually went really well. So we're we're gonna disc up those two bottom fields at the farm there. They're gonna go into grass. Last night lost um, some signals on the RTK. So we're gonna see if that's still going. Other than, otherwise, I've got to make a phone call. Um, yeah, hasn't been blown off since uh, it come off a straw. So it's caked in rubbish. I'm gonna just wash the windows quick. Uh, I've just got to put back together. This have all had um, greased up on the joints, on the rolls, on the bearings. There's loads, of, just loads and loads on those. Just gonna close up our inspection panels. Gotta keep these things blown out, otherwise they will get hot. They do get hot. Uh, Cole had it a few times actually, where it was blocking up the uh, vents in the front and it wasn't feeding enough air onto the rads. Look at that, missed a tiny bit down there. That's annoying. Front weight on, that's a 850 kilo weight on there, just to give the front end some traction. been blown off discs have been greased up ready to go we've blown out the air filter on the front and we're going to go back to our guidance line from last night well we're going to try to uh, last night and there was some sort of solar interference last night they, they, it was on the news actually that there was going to be satellite interference we lost all the satellites I don't quite know what happened there but I can see it's all back to normal this morning so we'll, we'll see if we can get this going back up so we're going to go back onto the guidance line this should have been one from last night. Farmer didn't name it, but uh, if we click on it, it should ping us back up. And those are our lines from last night. <clears throat> now, this offset range alert, I think that is what's fiddling with my... Um, I think that's what's fiddling with the button to start. And what we're going to do is just start ourselves a new section. So I should just be able to turn in here somewhere. Yeah, we'll click on to that next one. Like that. Press the A button. Oh, we're on the wrong gear. We want a bit of four wheel drive. A carriage in float which means um, the weight of the discs keep themselves in the ground so and uh, we can got the gears a bit I think we were running in 3d last night farmers coming down with their blue rolls he's going to press everything back down and then we're going to come through with a power harrow uh, in the week and uh, knock it all down again and then we're going to leave it and see what it does with a grass seabed you want to get it as fine as possible so uh, the one behind us has already been done. Keithy done that. That's been that was done. Um, I think they did that just before harvest started. Uh, I never got a picture, but uh, we're back on our lines. We'll see if we join up on the uh, next one. Lift your uh, this up. Pull your steering wheel. And um, let's see where we are on this line here. we want to be. Look at that look. I don't know why it does that. Because we're working this way across the field this way is always a bit. It, it, it'll leave a slither if we don't go down this line you see. But it means when we uh, fill in on the middle now we'll be going down the right hand side each time and then you, uh, you sort of start another block. It, it just saves any little ridges in the field. There we go, it's pretty simple. I'll get this field done, we'll start another field. We do the headlands last. I've got the screen here, and you know, and if you can't see your mark coming in the, in the screen, we're not using GPS, but it's marking where I've been, look. So, and it, it's, it, well, it's, it's more accurate than I can be, if you know what I mean. Um, but if you're wondering if you're on the right pass, your third time or your fourth time, it shows you, we're one, two, three, we're fourth time round. 
and uh, that's where we're going to finish up on this field and then we're going to go and start some new lines in the next field. And that's it, that's that field done. Uh, I don't know when we'll power harrow it, but we will power harrow it pretty soon. Same for this one, that will get power harrowed as well. And we're going to start, well, we're halfway up the field. So what we'll do, we'll literally just make our way up to the top here and set a new A and B. We'll just follow the tram lines, very simple. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this uh, during drilling. And I've never done any drilling. Now Peter's not here, we've got a some, somebody's got to use the drill, so uh, and I'm keen to have a go. So we'll see. We, you know, farmer might end up doing it, but I, I, I want to have a go at these things because um, well, you don't learn unless you do it. So, and I'm going to make mistakes. That's that's for certain. I'm going to make mistakes. <laughs> I make mistakes when I know what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. We'll have a bit of a. Hopefully, we'll have a go at it, and uh, hopefully, we don't mess up too much. These discs are quite annoying because they're offset, so you can't work the field like you normally would with a, you know, a central cultivator. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We're getting the job done. Keith has gone off with the discorator actually, and he is disking up some of the bean stubble over at Jim's. That's coming up quite nice, he said. If we get a minute next week, we'll um, we'll get over there with the drone and try and film him. I've got the drone with me today, but um, yeah, I just don't like filming in the tractor cab. It's jumpy and it's yeah, it's just horrible. Look at the dog left, the dog's running. Yeah. You see her? So, um, the, so the grey means we're playing rock climbing. That, that's the bit we've done, yeah, that's the bit we've done. Look, there it is out there. There's Bampy, look, there's Bampy. Can you see him? You gonna yeah, go, you gonna we, go for a ride with we, Bampy? We went in that field. I know. We set up the bottom field. Yeah. All right, this is gonna be the last little bit. I've just been away for lunch. Been away for about an hour. I'm picking back up my guidance line. You just let your, little, your line you made. We made this one this morning, and straight away, it is just it's literally centimeter accurate. It is exactly what it says it is. It's bang on it. You, we cannot do that with the other tractors that are on the free satellites. You just can't. Um, you'll have to. You'll come back. It'll set you on a line. You know the direction will be fine, but you won't be exactly where you want to be if i was drilling now i don't have to mess about with it bang straight in keep drilling no problem this thing's better than we thought it ever would be and we haven't had during harvest we've not used it it's incredible and um, there's an upgrade to this so we'll, we'll see what that does we'll you know when it comes we'll have a little look I, i'm so impressed with it i can't i can't tell you how impressive it is it is bang on the money and i know you've got to pay your 600 quid a year for your um for your rtk signal but i think it's worth it for this sort of ease ease of use and for the level of accuracy you get i, I actually think it's worth it and it the other thing it does it brings your old kit up to speed with um with everything else that's um out there it's it's absolutely fantastic but um yeah there we go that's the last little bit you'll see on there look at that look these discs yank this tractor about. They're always trying to yank you this way. So the steering is always fighting it, you know. It's pulling the butt end of the tractor. It's always trying to pull it one way. So, and it, it's doing a fantastic job. Look at us. That wheel needs to be on that line. And it's just on the money. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. I've got stone there. I'm gonna grab that. That will annoy me, that's coming out. We're going to get this field done up. We've got an afternoon out here, so we'll get this done up and uh, we'll see what's the uh, next job. It's uh, us, us finished up for the day. Got the last bales in, the last round ones in. There, uh, everything's off the fields now. We might continue on with the disc in across the other land. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll speak to the farmer, see what he wants to do. Uh, that's took half a tank of fuel, so not cheap, not a cheap hobby. So. And Keith's is even worse. That thing uses mental. This was using about 20 liters an hour. Keith's will be using 35 to 40, I imagine. Um, but his gets right down underneath, pulls it all up, breaks it up, and firms up the seabed as well. It's a one pass tool sort of thing. Right, so I'll just sort of show you how, the, how we're going on. We've got three spools set on these uh, Simba discs. So this one, just pull it back towards it. It's all unfolding, the four arms where the legs are. They just unfold. 
and uh, let's get out and I will show you. So we're using the uh, 7716, 160 horsepower, 850 kilo weight on the front, just to give the front end something to bite into. When you're pulling a cultivator, it's all about grip. You want something to pull you along. And the heavier you are, the more grip you have. We don't have to worry about compaction because everything is quite hard still. Uh, we're going to see, well, we're going to see firsthand how this uh, comes up together. Basically, we're chopping up all the straw we want to chop it up. We're going to prep this land for winter barley is the plan. Sometimes things don't go to plan, but uh, that's the, uh, the plan at the moment. We're still plenty early enough. This is where all those horrible, nasty oats were within the barley. And there's the actual pile of oats that the, uh, the old boy came and took off for us, uh, which did a real good job, actually. Now we need to turn this ground around. We want to get everything chopped up. We want to get everything roughed over, all the seeds mixed in. We want everything growing that can grow so that before we go planting winter barley, we can spray it off and get a real good clean kill of all the seeds that are lying about on top. So uh, that's the aim. I think um, what Charlie's going to do, Charlie's going to come down. She's going to have the rolls on it. We know it's going to come up a little bit knobbly. It's a little bit dry. It's super heavy land. It's going to come up a bit knobbly. A press, what you can have on the end of these Simba discs. I don't think this tractor would have the horsepower to pull it, but you can actually hook on a press behind these things, a double press, ever so heavy and does a nice job, crumbles everything down nice and level. But we're going to have to just do that job separately. Young Charlie's going to have a rough ride in that tractor. It's not a pretty job and it's not a nice job. It will just crush the nobbles down, fl flatten everything out. And hopefully we'll get a good, uh, you know, a good seabed for the rough stuff to grow. We've had a look at these discs before. Basically, they pick the dirt up, throw it one way. And then the next set of gang, the, the next gang, pick it up again, throw it back the other way. And just basically, it, it mixes the top, you know, inch and a half of dirt, just crumbles it up, bashes it about one way to the other, chops the straw. Well, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Um, we've done a video on this in the past, so we're not going to go too crazy over top of it. We've got our revs set on this preset button here, so I press that, revs the tractor up, four wheel drive on the pillar there, got handbrake on, handbrake on, we press start on our little button here. We drop the uh, cultivator down into float. What are we in? We want to go about 10k if we can get up to it, which we are. actually love doing this sort of job I don't know why it's, I don't know if it's the lines in the field this isn't the nicest kit to put on a GPS tractor it's always pulling the tractor the, the rear end of the tractor it's always pulling it that way so the, the, the steering system is really working hard to try and keep it but you can see here look we're bang on it will always try and keep you uh, this system will always try and keep you within two and a half centimeters but you can see it working hard because it's one way then the other and then back the other way if we were on something like a topper it, it you barely um yeah you barely see it working but there's the steering wheel going by itself look once you've had one of these i, I tell you it's it again it's um look at that behind us you try and do a straighter line than that you it won't happen i've got my drone with me i might leave it until tomorrow before we do some drone work um, just because we're a bit late starting, there's some showers about, and I think tomorrow's a better day. We'll have a good day on it tomorrow. We've been uh, moving cattle this morning. Lorry's coming in left, right, and centre, all the different farms. And when we get to the end, all we do is we pick the uh, cultivator up. You watch it, getting towards the end here. I'm going to hit the button now. And it just lifts it out the ground. Look. Then we turn around find ourselves another line to go on. Let's continue on here. 
and then drop your cultivator back down and away she goes it's unbelievably simple we're on a tram line this is the one we set ourselves up this is my a and b line so uh, look how accurate that is both tires on the tram line that's the way i set it up <laughs> You can't get more accurate than that. That is ridiculous. Look at that. That one's bang on that one. That one's bang on that one. Yeah, crazy. We've gone up and down a few times. We've actually gone up a gear, so we're getting along quite well. 12K. We're using a bit more fuel, but we're going a bit faster. So I don't know what's the best thing there. You can cut, knock it down a gear and use five liters less or cover the ground a bit quicker and use a bit more fuel. I actually think you should probably go a bit quicker. Um, it's doing a nice job still. Oh, oh, hit a hard bit. Hit a hard bit there, look. Making the track to work. It's got to work for its money. Uh, must be where the soil type changes, something like that. Maybe a bit of compaction, something like that, I don't know. We're away again now, look. But we'll cover more ground if we can keep the speed up. Also, if you look at the disc, you get a bubbling effect. Um, you know, it, it flicks the soil up, it bashes the other bits of soil, and you get like a bubbling effect. It actually does a nicer job, crumbles it down just a little bit finer. So I'm going to keep it as is, I think. A bit harder here again. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll get out and have a look at the job it's doing in a minute, but you can sort of see from the cab, just just getting a little bit of a rough tilt to get things growing, that's all we're doing. Keithy will get, if, if Keithy can get here with the disc grater, he will. He's got a lot to go at already at the moment. We'll, uh, we'll go and get a ride on with Keithy on the 8S as soon as we can. Uh, he has got, what have we got? We've got all the beans stubble because that's going to go into winter crops. So anything that we want, uh, anything we think we're going to try and get into winter, we're going to discrete first because um, that discrete does a real nice job. It's a slow job, but it does a very good job with drainage and we always see higher yields after we've discreted uh, wherever we go with it. If we can run it through all the winter, Everywhere we're going to have winter crops. If we can run it, run it through there as well, we'll um, he'll come back to this, you see, and he'll go through it again with this. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, while he's, while we're waiting for him to come here, you're getting things growing anyway. Keithy's got all of um, Jim's beans to cut, uh, do. That's where he is at the moment. He's, uh, I think he's nearly three quarters away through that. Then he's going to go into those oats that were at um, Collins. They did really well actually. We had uh, we just sold 10 loads or something. Farmer sold 9 or 10 loads and they're at milling quality as well. So they were really chuffed with those. The grain weight came in at 50, 58 litres per hectare. I, I, can't, I, can't, I don't know what the, I don't know what the term is, but it was 58 grams per hectolitre or something stupid like that. But uh, we knew they were pretty good because we um, we did our own test with them. We knew they were pretty good. So that's really good. We're really chuffed with that. They um, overall they did two and a half ton to the acre. They were um, yeah, they were really good. Alistair's are the same. They were really good. He's, he had the same variety, here, Isabel. And uh, yeah, last year just suited oats very very well for some reason. And we we didn't have to do nothing to them. They had a tiny bit of fertilizer and a tiny bit of muck. Uh, that's all they had. There's a seam across this field. I'll show you. And it's literally halfway across and it goes rock hard and it pulls really hard. You have to go down a gear in the tractor, but um, it's doing a nice job. Look at this. Look at all this loose soil, straw is going to get mixed in. Now, one thing I've noticed straight away, no birds. There's a few dotted about, but um, usually doing this sort of job, there'll be that, you know, you'd have a load of birds following you and they'll be looking for the worms. But um, because it's so hard, look at this stuff. Look at this soil. That is just ridiculous. There's no worms going to live in there, look. That's just, yeah. But where are the worms? The worms are right down deep uh, where it's still soft. But on the other hand, I actually think that's pretty good because, you know, you're not 
decimating your worm count to the birds usually you'd have bird, you know a thousand birds following you all the time so we'll um, we'll see but look at that it's do, you know it's doing a lovely job i know there's some big clumps in there as well but they will break down right home time <laughs> 